All right, so what we're about to talk about is something that's not that fun to talk about, but very, very important. Basically, I'm gonna tell you every single, I just like shine way over there and not got me for a second. I'm gonna tell you every single knot you need to know for bass fishing. This is literally the only knots I tie all year. I will rarely, once every four or five, I probably hadn't tied it in four or five years as a loop knot on like a pop or something, but I used to tie it a little. Don't tie that anymore, so pretty much. This is every single knot that I tie throughout the year. I wanna let y'all know them. It's everything you need, I promise you. Stay tuned. All right, so basically there's four main knots that I tie. I tie a polymer, I think it's called a double pitson, and then I tie, tie a snail knot and my braid knot, my braid two fluorocarbon knot. So I'll tell y'all all of those. These are exact ones I tie, these are the ones that I think are the strongest. I guess I will start with the braid knot, since it's the simplest one everybody knows, I'll start with it, so here it is. Okay, so the knot that I tie is braided line most of the time, unless I'm throwing like a 50 pound braid or smaller. If I'm throwing 65 pound braid uh, or a rough 50, I'll tie a regular polymer knot. And basically you look at that knot, I basically took a lighter, you can see that, and I seared the end of it, so just in case it does slip, it is burnt on the end, so it cannot slip all the way out. So basically, everybody knows a polymer knot. I'll show it to you anyways. The only difference is, the polymer and a double polymer is, you just wrap it twice. So a double polymer actually has four strands going through the eye. So that's how you tie a double polymer. You just tie a regular polymer, then wrap it again. But basically, a polymer knot is like this. I run it through. Just like that, I run it back through. Uh oh. Okay. So you got a loop on one side and your main line, your tag on the other. Basically, if you want to make it a double polymer, you just take this loop and run it through the eye again. So there's four things in there. But all you do is you tie an overhand knot like this. So I got the loop on this side, main line and tag in on this side. Make a circle, put the loop through the circle you made, and then put it around the bait. Pretty simple. Everybody knows how to tie a polymer. Cinch it down, and even on braid, I do wet it. So, because I have broken braid quite a few times. So I wet braid, and then I do, like I said, I take a lighter and I will. I usually cut it about that long. Then I'll hit the end of it with a lighter and make it about half that and then have a, a burnt spot where it can't slip if it does ever slip. Because a lot of the braid that I use is very slick, has a slick coating on it. So you want to use a double polymer. If you're going to use like a 30 pound braid or a 40 pound braid, you really need to tie a double polymer. Even 50, I would recommend tying a double polymer. On 65, a polymer knot seems to be fine. I've never really had it where I felt like it slipped. But, you know, even then, a double polymer might be a better case. But anytime you're using lighter, line that is super slick like any of the suffix 832 you want to tie a double polymer for sure okay so obviously everybody knows how to tie a polymer knot that's nothing special this is the one that's going to get a little bit more unconventional basically this is the exact jig i lost that giant fish on the other day this is a rubber skirted turtleneck jig that's the same chunk i had on it that's literally everything that i used and it needs to be retied anyway so it's a good thing i'm doing this so basically this is what i call the double pitson i used to call it a san diego jam so if y'all watch my video about the line, you know this is the knot I was talking about. But I've come to realize it's actually called a double pitson. So basically, what you do is you start off just like a polymer. Like the first three steps are just like a polymer. You get you a loop on one side. You get you the main line and the tag in on the other. Just like this. So this is the way I started. So main line, tag in, in your right hand. Loop in your left hand. I'll do it like this just so you can follow. That's where the loop is at. So I take the loop. Wrap it over this finger. So you got the main line and the tag in coming off your finger off the front side, going through the circle and coming back up over here. So this time, now you just take this loop that you had and you wrap it three times around all this, all off the circle you made with your finger. So one, two, and that's three go arounds. Okay, so now you've got this loop and this wrap three times. So now you take this, I always kind of kink it to make it pointed so it slides through better. And then you put this through the circle you made with your finger. And you pull it up. So 
So basically now, all I did was I put it through that circle with the finger and I tied it down to where it looks like this. Okay, so now you, you can see if I let it go, you've got three tag ends. So I wet it, cinch it down, and you've got three tag ends. Now if you wanna know if you've tied this right, this is a complete slip knot. So if you pull on this loop, you should be able to pull it back up the line like this. So the reason I tie this instead of a polymer, you can see from the bottom of this knot, there's literally no obstructions. You see the bottom of that knot? There's nothing in between the bottom of that knot and that hook eye. So whenever you tie a polymer, basically you've got that knot over a piece of line, pressing a piece of line in between the knot and the hook eye. This knot is not like that at all. There's no obstruction. So all it does, whenever you set the hook, it pulls this, I lost my tag in there because I pulled it down without cinching it down right. But whenever you pull this knot down, basically all it does is pull straight down harder to the eye of the hook. So there's a direct pull straight to the eye of the hook. There's nothing in the way. Fluorocarbon is very, very dense. So if there's a piece of line under your knot and you set the hook and cinch it down, it's going to burn that line that's pinched between your knot and the eye of the hook. So as you can see, whenever I pull this thing up, like this right here, that's the knot. And like I said, you pull that loop after you tie it whenever you're practicing, you can see there's absolutely nothing in between that and the hook eye. So that's the reason I tie this for fluorocarbon. I, when I used to tie a polymer, I broke off very, very regularly. I was got to the point where I was literally going pretty much crazy on how much I was breaking off. And I switched to this knot, and I mean seriously, I broke off a handful of times in five or six years tying this knot. So this is the knot that I tie. Every time I'm doing something like this, the only time I tie it to crankbaits, jigs, everything, the only time I don't tie this knot to fluorocarbon is when I'm flipping or bed fishing. If I'm using a straight shank hook, I always tie a snail. Other than that, I tie this double pits and knot. So I just tied it again because I messed it up pulling it up while ago. You can see it's got three tag ends. It's cinched down. That's how it should look cinched. It's got three tag ends. You cut all three of those tag ends. And that's it. That's the strongest fluorocarbon knot I have found. Now the problem with this is if you're throwing a crankbait, this will pick up slime. If you're throwing something in grass, this will pick up slime. It will pick up grass and stuff off the bottom because there's three tag ends. But I just have to deal with it because I know this is a stronger knot than any other knot. So that's what I tie. All right, so this is my favorite knot to fish with. Everybody knows I love to flip. And this is my snail knot. This is why I use a ton. So basically, if I'm tying a snail knot, unless I'm bed fishing, it starts out with a bobber stop. I know I don't need to show y'all that, but that's what I'm doing. So. I'm rigging this up for me to actually go fishing with, so that's why I'm putting a bobber stop on it. So, put a bobber stop on it, slide it up out of the way, give yourself a foot or so, and we need a half ounce weight right now. Hog Tech Tungsten, that's the only ones that I use at the moment. Haven't found anything better. I really like the shape of them. And I have tried every hook, every flipping hook you can pretty much try. And I always find my way back to a Trocar TK-130. That is the hook. If I could catch every single fish for the rest of my life on that exact hook, I'd have a lot more money in my pocket because you don't lose them on that hook very often. I lose some. Now, I lose some flipping, but it's uh, you're in real heavy cover, and the amount of fish you get out because of that hook is amazing. So that's the hook that I keep going back to, the Trocar TK-130. Basically, got your bobber stop on half ounce tungsten slide up on there and then the important part is which way you start so you see the hook I got the hook point facing towards the line I run the line in over the hook point through the front of the hook okay pull you about a, a foot of line off just make it easier for you run you an inch down the hook shank so you see I got the line laying down the hook shank pinch it right there I bring it up and make me a circle so you can see on that hook shank I've got me a circle laid down by the hook keeper hold that all tight I take the fluorocarbon and I wrap it five times above the hook keeper, I mean the bait keeper. So you see the black bait keeper, I lay that fluorocarbon as smoothly as I can on top of it. Going from bottom to top, I lay it cascading upwards, get it real pretty on there, 
and I've tried doing it seven times or I've never tried less than five I just feel like five is plenty strong and that's the best way to get it without burning your line if I tie if I usually use seven or so I usually seem to burn the line more but I cinch it down about that tight you can see everything's still kind of loose but I've got it almost in place then I wet it pull it tight then I pull it super tight with the tag in I really really cinch it down with the tag in because I don't mind it burning the tag in as much then I just kind of snug it up from the main line and that is I leave a little bit of extra space I mean extra tag in so I leave about a quarter of an inch like that and the reason we tie a snail knot is as most people know whenever you set that hook it's really important with a with a bigger weight but I do do it when I'm flipping a half ounce too when you set the hook turn when you set the hook it jacks that hook out you can't tell it as much with this half ounce weight but you can see the weight if I got the weight sitting straight down like that it really pops that hook out let me get turn where y'all can see it correctly come on turn 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 sucker okay right there you can see how that hook is popping out that's what you want with a snail knot that's why we tie a snail knot all right so I had that snail knot up in y'all's grill too much so I'm gonna show you all from a little bit further back while we do that so I got the hook the weight sitting straight up right now and you can see when I when I pull that thing simulating the hook set you have to visualize visualize that weight hitting the fish on the top of the mouth and causing that hook to pop out so when that weight hits that fish on top of the mouth it makes that hook pop up hit them in the roof of the mouth or if it's sideways hit them in the side of the mouth I even hook them in the tongue sometimes but that gets them it gets them a little bit deeper than average so the knot that I consider last and also least because I do not use these kind of rods very often at all is my braid to fluorocarbon leader knot and this is one that a lot of people struggle with people seem to have a hard time finding which one they like and basically I'll show you the one that I tie so it's pretty simple cut this thing off okay so I take your leader line where is it at here take your leader line and basically bend it in a circle so you can see what I've got right here is just a circle and I've got about that's probably four and a half inches right there and that's about what I normally do I will usually make the circle about that big so I've got it pinched I've got the leader coming down below my hands like this and then basically you take your main line your braid you run it through the circle like this okay I hold it all so I've got it going straight through the circle then I hold it and I've got basically you're wrapping it over both lines that you made for your leader line and you wrap it seven times but basically this is how I this is what I found is the strongest so I wrap it about seven and I'll wrap it back up basically back over the seven I usually do it four times and I've seen people do it seven down and seven up I use 20 pound main line so I do it less wraps but if you're using like a if you're using like a 12 pound braid which I don't recommend you can wrap it seven times down and seven times up and then basically you take your main line and run it back through the loop you made and now this is where I'm at now I ran through that loop and I've got it where I'm about to cinch it down wet it pull on all four things the tag ends and all at first and then just transition after you get it like see how perfectly in order it is after you get it there you just pull on the main line so I have not put I only put on the tag ends to get it to where it's fixing to lay correctly then after that I only pull on the main lines like that so I've got that cinch down you can see that's a pretty slim knot that's the one that I tie comes through the guides on your spin rod pretty well I always try to cut down the leader material I try to cut that tag in as short as possible because that's the one that hits the guides going out so I try to make that very very short and the one of your main line which is usually the braid it's not as important because that hits when you're reeling it back in so you know it's not like you're just messing up your cast so I usually leave it a tad bit longer even and it works out because braid kind of splinters and I don't like to have it uh, super short it'll splinter and get down into the knot pretty badly so basically that's how I tie the uh, what you call it leader knot I don't know what the name of the knot is I don't have any idea Alberto FG it's something I saw I think Brett Heights the one that I watched a video on him tying it I don't throw spin rods very often so I'm not really fluent with that knot but basically the snail knot the double pitson and the polymer and the double polymer is about all I ever tie tie that leader knot just probably 
15 or 20 times a year but anyways i didn't and on that snail knot basically i didn't tell y'all but whenever you're wrapping it up then you take your when you wrap it from bottom to top five times you take your main line and then run it through the loop that you made on the shank of the hook and that's whenever you cinch it down in the video you can see me where i do it very clearly but i wasn't talking i was just doing it instinctually i never talk about this stuff i just kind of do it and so whenever i'm trying to teach it's just kind of foreign to me because i just do it naturally so anyways that's all the knots i tie hope y'all learned something from that like i say if your knots work if they never fail don't change do not go from a polymer on fluorocarbon if you've never broken off don't do it it'll just give you problems so but if you are having issues give these knots a try appreciate you guys watching leave a like leave a comment hit that sub button thank you guys i will see y'all next time